Hello guys and welcome to HDD Recovery Services. I'll be working on a flash drive uh, presumably made by uh, Lexar. This device is based on a very common SM3267L type controller for these devices. Looking at it here uh, I can definitely tell that this component is missing and besides that they actually glued it to a piece of tape and sent that along. This is a flash drive that has 9-pin connector on it. So in my personal experience, 9-pin connectors are very sturdy and they have a lot of real estate to hold on to, uh, to the board. Uh, if uh, you see that anchors are not shaken, really there shouldn't be any breaks in the connector and the headers and the traces uh, that link everything together. In order for the flash drives, PCB, uh, remain steady in the, inside of the housing, vendors put in these cuts in the PCB, okay? So uh, just generally, this becomes the most vulnerable spot for flexing. So what happens when the flash drive gets flexed? Well, something like this can happen. I have uh, a donor board that I worked on uh, before as a chip off procedure, so that's why there are no memory chips on it. But we will use this component and transfer it over to our board here. Fume extractor is on. Gonna add a little bit of flux here. Whoa. All right, so that's good. And take this component and just simply move it over to uh, Okay, so now this is in place, let's clean it. Let's uh, plug it into the meter and see what we get for consumption. And we're getting nothing. Uh, it's uh, putting in five plus some volts in there, uh, but the uh, um, it's drawing zero amps. So if we were to plug this in directly to like data recovery equipment, deep spar in this case, and power on the unit through control panel, we're getting the same read, zero. Let me show you why. Let's have a look at the connections around the controller. Over here, looking at these connections, it's hard to say whether they're still making solid contact or not, but most likely they are fully connected still. When there is no connection, it does stand out. You see that little gap impact bent the flash drive so much that the bond between the pad and the controller's pad broke. So the solder is no longer connecting the dots. So we could technically just run uh, hot iron through it and plug it in to see if it's gonna work or not. But in this case, it's best to be practical and remove the chip altogether and reset it again after uh, it's been taken up. Uh, there is a chance that there might be some broken pads that we don't see. Not all of them uh, have traces going out. Some of them will have traces going in. So if they're broken, uh, let's say where the traces are going in on the inside and we don't see it, running the hot iron uh, through it will not, um, will not take care of the problem for us. 
and we'll have to second guess ourselves. If you want to be thorough, you want to remove this controller. So looking at the pads, they all look good. We could land it back here, but uh, we could also retin them just to make sure that you know the the, the solder is fresh and uh, new. that's it and that should make it work so let's see if our consumption had changed yes so it's taking in 30 milliamps turn off now if we go into the USB stabilizer we should be able to see that it mounts the device 120 gigs and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our studio now and 128 gigabyte device is right here Open it up with hex and the map side by side. So this is our unit. Looking at the first sector, I can see that it's uh, fully accessible. As we scroll it down, we get to see different locations of the device. So this device is now fixed. It can work, it will work, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clone it anyways. Uh, on PC3000 and once I got the clone uh, made I will notify the customer that all of the data is saved. If you guys have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next episode.